You're looking a little bit worse for wear today, Carl. It's almost like I'm hungover or something. Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the most critically lauded, fastest selling and most dick smashingly fantastic games released in recent history. The product of like a million man hours, the game is notable for a baffling array of minor details, such as realistically shrinking horse testicles. Yeah! I love my job sometimes. This is the best. Judging by our analytics, I'm guessing the majority of people watching this video have played or at least know of Red Dead Redemption. Yes, but for the people who haven't, which probably explain, like, you know, the game and Basically, you take control of a big dicked outlaw called Arthur Morgan, and you go around the Wild West with your multi-ethnic gang of ne'er-do-wells, shooting people in the dick and exploring a giant, sprawling world populated with NPCs with offensively unshot dicks. But I, I should probably point out that when I play that game, I only shoot people in the dick. Because in Red Dead, you can go into like um, dead eye mode where you get to like mark targets, and there's nothing more satisfying. You go into dead eye mode, and you have like six people in front of you, and then one second later, all six have been shot in the dick and kneecaps. <laughs> it's like, because you know what? That's a legend that travels around the Wild West pretty fucking quick. The legend of my version of Arthur Morgan spread around that fucking world like a wildfire. Because you remember the tales of a guy who walked into town, bought like 400 cans of beans, shot three people in the dick and then left on a jet black horse that he was doing donuts on outside. <laughs> you can do horse donuts in this thing. It's like basically the, the horses are the cars of this game and you can get like, oh, you can do skids and stuff on them. But it gets to the point where if you get maximum control over a fast horse, you literally just do power slides. <laughs> it's like, are you ready? It's time for Wild West Drift. Just woohoo! Just like horse drifting, man. This dude can't be stopped. How do you defeat an outlaw who can drift a horse? Hey. Like they told me it couldn't be done. So I was like trying to do stunts in it. I, was, like, I drifted over a train track as a train came past. It's like, Arthur, you can't do it. It can't. It's like, no, I'm going to be the first guy to multi track drift with a horse. You'll see me. And the last they see of me is just like being hit by a train and flying into the air while firing dual handguns in every direction at once. Oh. Arthur Morgan is a big dick G, but you have to give props. Like his protege, the guy from the previous game, the guy who set up and laid the groundwork for Red Dead Redemption 2, John fucking Marston, the hero himself, his vocal fry. Like, oh, it's so good. It's like his voice is just so distinctive. I fucking love it. I love John Marston so much. He's such a nice guy, but when I play him, it's like, some people are gonna get shot in the dick. So that's the thing, I'm a nice guy, but you are going to get shot in the It's happening, whether you want to or not. And as well, probably the greatest last stand in a video game belongs to John Marston, where he faces down like 40 fucking soldiers on his own, and you go into like one last dead eye, and you get the opportunity like to shoot as many as you can, and you can never win. But guess how many of those people got shot in the balls, Brad? Fucking as many as John Marston could take down with him. Because that's a, that's a last stand that, again, gets told across like the Wild West for all time. Did you hear about John Marston? Yeah, it sucks that, doesn't it? It's like, but I did hear he went down swinging. So yeah, you can say that. So what do you mean? Well, do you not hear what he did? It's like, I just heard he, he took out like, you know, six people in his way. No, no, he didn't take them out. He took out their generations. They're still walking around, but they're not siring anyway. He didn't, he didn't go for the kill. He went for the like, just eradicate the bloodline in one fell swoop. <laughs> So Red Dead Redemption is made by Rockstar. Yes, developed and published by Rockstar, a company renowned in the industry for just their attention to detail. And Red Dead Redemption 2 is no exception and it is crammed to the gills with just like tiny, tiny, that's tiny and minor details. I, oh, fuck's sake. You know what? That's, that's a, a new, new word. That's a new word right there. OED, get on that shit. So that it's full of tiny, me, di no, that, that. It's almost like I was drinking I'm yesterday. This in. It's full of tiny details that most people wouldn't even notice, let alone give a shit about. My favourite example being the way like, animals interact with one another. Because all animals in the game, there's quite a few of them, like they range in size and fuzziness, um, interact with, with you, the player, NPCs and other animals in the game world in a realistic way. The best one being possums, which will actually play possum if you get too close. And then if you go up to them and try and skin them, we'll try and nibble your dick off before running away. So every so the lesson there being, if you see a possum out of the side of the road, you shoot that motherfucker. <laughs> because it, as well, I felt so bad. It must look so weird that this guy just goes past on a horse and just shoots the possum on the floor. 
There's just something really hilarious about the fact like you can just like the world has so many animals in it. And you feel like such a dick sometimes. But like I need that pelt. I need to, like, I remember I was hunting alligators and I'm hunting alligators with a fucking sniper rifle. <laughs> so I feel like one of those dicks in a hunting show. So I'm like, yeah, it's man versus nature, it's me versus the animals. As I'm just hooking sticks of dynamite into the bayou and just going in and collecting what's mine. The animation is so unsettling yeah. because they put in like the realistic rabbit animation where you like grab the rabbit by the scruff and then rip all its skin off like a Mortal Kombat fatality. And I was like, oh, that's awful. And then a friend of mine went, yeah, but it's real. That's how you skin. I'm like, oh, no. Because that means the only thing you see a rabbit. That means that there's always a worry in my head now. That whenever I see a magician pull a rabbit out of a hat, he might pull it out too fast and just pull out all the skin. And there's a skinless screaming rabbit in there. It's like, no! There's at least one kid's birthday party that's ended in either the most metal or horrifying way imaginable, depending on what your personality is. But yeah, that game, the animals in it, it's just, there's so many. And also you have to hunt, you have to hunt to earn money early in the game. And it got to the point where I, I wasn't even thinking about what I was doing. I was like going down the road, I just saw a fox just pulling out a rifle and just shooting it. It's like, man, I am just, I feel like such an asshole. But I need his pelt. I need, I need to make my fox hat. What's worse though, like um, sort of um, humanely killing the animal or pulling a... Um venom snake on it, attaching a balloon and sending it into orbit. Just ruinously traumatise the animal. So what other small details did they put into Red Dead Redemption 2? Well, there is um, a weather system that includes snow that accumulates realistically and will slow your movement in a manner that you would expect for a person like trudging through deep snow. It also gets displaced realistically, depending on how you're moving through it, what you're wearing, whether you're on horseback or not. And that led to the creation of a famous image of the, one of the very first people to get the game. Because the first area you go to is like a big snowy mountain. One of the first things they did is just made a big, huge dong in the snow. Of course. Of course they did, yeah. And then released it. And this game's amazing. And that's the thing they released. And was like, yep, yeah, one of the first people in the world to get this game. And you made a dong in the snow. There's got to be more details. Of course there is. You can like shoot someone's hat off and then steal it. And there are numerous craftsmen in the world who will take animal pelts from like, you know, animals that you've hunted and skinned and then turn them into hats and coats. And I love it because my favourite one has just got to be just this hat that is just a wolf. It's, or a fox or some shit like that. And it's literally just like a little fox head. So let's just get straight to the meat of the article. Yes, this, the big swinging horse flavoured meat. And that is the shrinking horse testicles, because that's the detail that got the most column inches. And for anyone who happened to miss this, in Red Dead Redemption, uh, male horses all have a big set of swinging balls that will shrink realistically in cold weather. So if you go take that male horse into like, you know, the mountainous areas of the map where it's all snowy, you can just watch as their testicles shrink up into their body. And then you can go down the mountain to somewhere much warmer and watch them just like descend once again. And it's such a dumb feature, but I think that encapsulates Rockstar as a company. It's like, we're gonna pay some intern somewhere to like write the horse ball shrinking algorithm instead of more animations of bears eating shit when they get hit by trains. And like, you know what? I respect them for it. There's gotta be a reason why. Yeah, that's the question <laughs> on everybody's lips, isn't it? And a writer for The Guardian did ask um, a higher up at Rockstar Studios, like, what the fuck is the deal with these like you know sh shrinking horse testicles and the guy explained look i know on its own it sounds silly but you can say the same thing about any of the details we put into this game that what we believe though as a company as a studio is that all these minor details when combined create a more seamless game world and the more stuff you can put in where like because players knowing that like that we've got a reputation for this now the more realistic stuff we put in like that the more seamless the game world feels and the more you go into like, and the less you get taken out of the game. Because there's not, if you can't agree, there's nothing more like immersion shattering in a video game than like stuff like, oh, you can't climb over this like foot high fence. Stuff like that. Or your character tries to walk up a flight of stairs and just immediately collapses and dies. So, so I appreciate it from that point of view, but at the same time, it's also kind of hilarious that the, the, like, you know, the focal point of this idea is just a giant set of horse testicles just shrinking in the snow. I love the idea there where they're like, 
Um, your immersion will be damaged if the horse balls stay the same size. It's like more the fact though. It'd be damaged if like just don't put them in. It's like if they weren't in, I don't think anyone actually no. I tell a lie because um, I know one of the earliest mods for Skyrim was to give horses realistic balls and vaginas because some guy out there was so annoyed that the horses didn't have that. So one of the earliest mods for Skyrim, look it up, was realistic horse genitalia. But why? Because Brad. To like, you know, paraphrase that guy from Rockstar. If it's not there, it breaks your immersion. In yeah, a world, yeah. yeah. In, in a world full of dragons and guys who can shout people off cliffs. Yeah. What I really want is a swinging set of horse balls. You know what though? One guy out there was annoyed, and he he went out and he fixed that problem himself. But you don't have to do it. The Red Dead, it's already there. The well, thing is though, for that one reason, I could never ride a male horse because it always pissed me off. Because you basically spend the entirety of your time like traveling across the map just staring at this big set of swinging balls, and it's so annoying. So I always purposely went and got a female horse. Do they have horse cocks as well? I don't know. I don't think it's that detailed. Like, could you put a male horse next to a female horse? And I don't it, think it, I, it would get bigger. You know what? I bet that there's a mod for it out there somewhere, guaranteed. <laughs> so although like, all those mods for Grand Theft Auto, where it's like, oh, you now can just play as a pigeon. And I remember like losing my shit watching one of these for the first time. It's like a random thing that showed up in my recommendations one day. And it's like, it's just a pigeon walking down the road. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? And then it's just the pigeon walks up to a car and hijacks the car. I'm like, wait, what? How is this a thing? Other well, well, famous ones like, oh yeah, I changed all the bullets in Grand Theft Auto to be cars. So your gun just shoots cars now. And it's like the police saying, police, pull up. And he pulls out a minigun, just fires like 40 cars. It's like, oh, okay. Have you, have you been keeping up with the new Overwatch workshop? No. I saw a mod someone did on that where it was Bastion, but he fires Torbjorns. <laughs> I love all that. Have you got any like personal favourite just mods that just like make the game just hilariously stupid? What about the one with, uh, oh, it's Skyrim, but the dragon's Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah, the, that's the classic yeah. one, or the Randy Savage um, one, where it's like the um, all the dragons are macho man Randy Savage, and it plays his theme song. And instead of roaring, they all say, yeah! It's just <laughs> super, like, Skyrim is famous for them, but, like, some of the ones for Grand Theft Auto is ridiculous, like, playing as a dog, and the ability to just summon dogs. Oh, but the, the classic of all time, that can never be beaten, is the minor update someone made to the game where they turned the, um, the C4 into Galaxy Note 7s. <laughs> and then Samsung told them to take it down because it was infringing on their intellectual property. Oh, man, that whole Galaxy Note 7 thing was amazing. Did you hear about the guy who got kicked off a plane for it? <laughs> uh, yeah, the, uh, for people who don't know this story, there's a guy on a plane, bored, just sat there on his phone, turned his Wi-Fi hotspot on and changed the Wi-Fi hotspot name to Galaxy Note 7. And they like immediately like disembarked the plane because people were panicking, thinking it was going to blow up. And then they released a folding phone where the screen broke after a day. And it cost 2000 fucking dollars. And like reviewers were getting it and it's like, oh, my screen broke in a day. It just fell off. The screen just comes off. It's like there's a hinge in it and I got like a grain of sand under there or some shit and now the screen's dead. What a fucking amazing piece of technology. Thanks, Samsung. Hashtag the future. <laughs> From the company that brought you exploding phones. <laughs> Do you know what I saw? This, it was great because I was following this story very intently because it was so funny to me. I was like in a forum somewhere where people were trying to defend Samsung for releasing this device and an actual defense I saw of the Galaxy Note 7 is it didn't actually explode, it only caught fire. <laughs> oh, that, that's fine then. <laughs> yeah, but the device you exclusively keep next to your fucking nutsack, oh, it's fine, it only caught fire. But I'm pretty sure the person whose nutsack is like just seared beyond recognition by battery acid, he's going to be very thankful when you come and correct him when he's like telling like, you know, Samsung on oh, my phone, oh, actually, no, it only caught fire, it was a battery rupture. Get your facts straight there, mate. It's like, Alba, you suck on my gnarled, charred ball sack and fuck off with your defence of a billion dollar company who released a shitty phone that exploded. It was a car uh, that supposedly it blew up. Tesla. Was it a Tesla car? Yeah, there was a video another day. So we need to recall them because they're all blowing up. All that Mazda, all that, uh, I think it was a Mazda that was recalled because it was full of spiders. Because apparently... How is every Mazda full of spiders? The, the design of like the air intake thing was apparently a haven for spiders and people were driving them and just spiders were blowing out of the air filter. <laughs> so you just like get into like covered in spiders. Oh, that is a nightmare car. It is that. That's what they recalled it. You can look you, it up. If you try and call for help on your Samsung phone, it just gets <laughs> worse and worse. Oh, it's like that GPS they had to recall in Germany because drivers were ignoring the female voice on it and driving into rivers. 
Because like there, there was like an update where it's, oh, it's a female voice in our GPS. And drivers are saying, well, no, I'm not, this woman doesn't know what she's saying. I'm going to drive this way. And they kept driving a fucking rivers. It's an automated voice. Yeah. And they recalled it and replaced it with a man's voice. People were driving into rivers because like, I know better than this fucking robot woman. So obviously when GPSs first came out and we were, like, weren't exactly a big thing, <laughs> they were just driving and losing their cars and going, well, it's not my fault. It's like, well, did the GP, what did, did GPS tell you going? No, she told me to go the other way and I ignored her. It's like, you know, it's not real, right? You know, it's not a real woman. It's just a robot disembodied voice that's supposed to help you. So yeah, but I know better than that. So okay then, where's your car? I won't get you, you don't need a lift then, do you? Obviously. <laughs>